Thank you all for coming. And turn it up, turn it up! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somewhere around here, my wife is sitting right down here. Uh, Linda is with us. She's a senior in college. Yeah! In, in, in that state of Texas. <laughs> now there's something that is very fascinating about this campus. It's a beautiful campus. And you know what else I noticed? You have more bicycles than anybody else. Yeah! 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 Bicycles. I love bicycling. <laughs> we don't have a little bit more time. I'd love to ride around the campus, but I see a lot of bicycles and uh, a lot of people tonight, and that is wonderful. So that reassures me that the revolution is alive and well at UC Davis. That is wonderful. And believe me, we really need a revolution because we are not going in the right direction. This country has drifted off. So it's time that we change the direction of this country. We don't have to invent anything new. Why don't we just pick up where the founders sort of steered us? Individual liberty, that's what we want. That's what Now, if you emphasize individual liberty, you solve all the problems. And one thing that we could have prevented our problems in this country would have been if we had followed the Constitution. That would have helped. So if we got into this mess because we have not followed the Constitution, you know, it doesn't take, uh, you, you know, a tremendous genius to figure out, well, maybe we can get back on our feet again by sending only people to Washington who have actually read the Constitution and you believe they will follow the Constitution. Instead, instead today we have a Congress that doesn't uh, pay much attention. They don't probably even know most of what Article 1, Section 8 is all about. And all the restraints our courts legislate, our executive branch legislate. And uh, if, they, if, if they want a piece of legislation and the Congress acts too slowly, our president says, well, that's okay, I'll just write an executive order. Boo! And then we but there's one thing, uh, there's one thing very neat about a constitutional president. All the legislation that has been passed by executive order would be repealable by an executive order. So there would be no more assassinations of American citizens or a threat of assassinations. Of course, if we get rid of all the unconstitutional attacks on our civil liberties, there will be no military coming in and arresting individuals in the individual states and put in secret prison. There'll be no more of that. Because once we get the list uh, figured out, the list keeps growing, but very top, very high up on that list will be the repeal of the Patriot Act. There is a, a lot a president can do, a constitutional president can do, by issuing legal executive orders. The president is the commander-in-chief of the military forces. The president has the authority to bring the troops home without the congressional authority. Just bring them home! I'm not talking just about the Middle East, I'm talking about Germany and Japan and Korea and Africa. And in the meantime, you know, what they're trying to convince us of is that maybe we can back off a little bit on that, but now that we've declared war against the world with the global war on terrorism, they figure that from New Mexico or from Washington, D.C., they can have a drone war and kill anybody they want around the world. I think the drone war ought to cease. And of course, there are many who think the drone war ought to be applied to American citizens. There is a plan now to have over 
30,000 drones flying over this country. Of course, they, uh, they have to be very busy. You know, there's a lot of laws on the books, and uh, 40,000 new ones put on in January, and they think the solution is, this compulsion is, we have to enforce all these laws. I have a better solution. Why don't we repeal those laws? I imagine many of you uh, heard the story just the last couple days. There was a um, college student down in San Diego, college student there, and uh, they say he was doing bad things. Who knows what he was doing? But he was he was in the state of California. If there was any disobedience of law, it used to be that the policemen had something to say about this. But who barged in? It was the DEA arrested and a bunch of young people for whatever suspicion they had. But what did they do? They put them in prison. Most of them got released, but they forgot about one. Five days in prison, no water, nearly died, was in intensive care for three days. <laughs> the DEA has no authority to be law enforcement in any state whatsoever. <laughs> Especially if a state comes along and says that they should have a different position on drug usage and uh, legalize and say that it is permissible, the last thing we should have is the federal government automatically and assuming that they can override any state law at all. They should be out of the business of invading this state. For the first time. Of course, the uh, real problem with the whole war on drugs, it does no good whatsoever. The war on drugs is a lot more dangerous than the drugs themselves. And if they truly were concerned about addiction, they'd have to be a lot more concerned about prescription drugs because that's where most of the addiction is. And if they cared about the practical effects of prohibition, why don't they go back and read history? Why don't they read what it was like in the 1920s and why the American people thought, well, this is foolish. This repeal is silliness about prohibition. Let the people decide what is best for themselves. But today we live, uh, the way I see it, in, 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 it is a period of lawlessness. And uh, the, our, our government acts outside the law. Instead of the law protecting your privacy, they invade and destroy your privacy like the Patriot Act undermines the Fourth Amendment. But do we have openness of government? No, we have secrecy of government. We pass laws that are supposed to protect whistleblowers, but if they do any whistleblowing and reveal some information that they want to be held secret, they get into trouble and they get thrown in jail and they lose their jobs. It should be the other way around. We want privacy for the people and openness of our government. examples of the need for openness is, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve System. We need to know exactly what they're doing. Like I say, that's a very good idea. <laughs> But, you know, we can't end the Fed in one day, but the, ends, the Fed will eventually end itself because it, it's embarked on a destruction of the currency. But in the meantime, why aren't we permitted to legalize constitutional money and allow people to use gold and silver as a currency?